Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I rise today to speak about what has been a terrible tragedy in my community, and I know sadly that this has been a shared experience of so many communities in Australia this summer. I have much to say and much I think we need to do with respect to the recovery, future planning for similar disasters and recognising um, climate change uh, exacerbated these fires. But today, in this place, I want to thank and acknowledge the work of so many in Mayo. Christmas was a time of great fear in my electorate of Mayo as we faced bushfires in the Adelaide Hills and on Kangaroo Island. The 20th of December was a catastrophic fire day in South Australia. The temperature was predicted to reach 46 degrees. The heat was made worse by hot northerly winds and then a predicted wind change in the afternoon. For me, the morning was filled with a foreboding feeling of dread. Around mid-morning, the Hollands Creek Road at Cudley Creek on Hollands Creek Road, a tree brought down power lines and that started a blaze that travelled through Lobethal, Kenton Valley, Woodside, Mount Torrens, Charleston, Brakunga and Harrogate. With the heat and the wind, the fire appeared unstoppable. On that same day, on Kangaroo Island, fires were started by lightning strikes on the western end of Kangaroo Island. Difficult to access, the fire continued to burn and then flared up a couple of weeks later, travelling across the island, encircling the townships of Pandana and Vavon Bay. The fire engulfed approximately two-thirds of the island, including the beloved Western District's Memorial Community Sports Club at Goss. The fire is now contained but is not yet extinguished. In total, 185 fires have been lost across two fire grounds. Hundreds upon hundreds of buildings and sheds, thousands of livestock, over 60 vineyards are fire affected, burned orchards and millions of wildlife. Koalas, kangaroos, dunnarts, bees. As the fire has scorched more than 300,000 hectares, most tragically, though, we lost three people from our community, people who were loved and cherished, and I would like to pay respect to those three who will forever be missed and deeply loved and longed for by their respective families and communities. Mr Ron Self, was aged 69, he was a civil engineer. Mrs Self died at his property in Charleston. Mr Self is remembered as a loving and generous man in our community. In a statement provided by his family, Mr Stealth was described as a man with an incredible passion for life. He left behind his partner Susie, his children Joanna, Luke and Jasmine, and their partners Lachlan, Joe and Scott, and six grandchildren. A keen bark enthusiast who was a passionate farmer and a spiritual man devoted to his family. He built a highly successful engineering business that contributed to the design of thousands of buildings in South Australia, mainly in the Adelaide Hills, and is often described as an unforgettable character. On Kangaroo Island, we lost a father and son, Dick and Clayton Lang. Dick was aged 78 and his youngest son, Clayton, aged 43. They were found on Saturday, January the 4th, a day after the Kangaroo Island fires were described as virtually unstoppable. Dick was an experienced adventurer, a tour operator and a bush pilot. He forged a successful adventure business in the rugged and remote Australian outback with his wife Helen. Dick's son Clayton Lang, known as Clary, was one of Adelaide's most respected plastic surgeons with a specialty interest in hand surgery. One of four sons and born in 1975, Clayton was married to his wife Christy, an anaesthetist and has left behind two daughters, Sophia and Madeline. Clayton was senior staff specialist at the QEH at Woodville and lead clinic, uh, clinician at the hand surgery clinic, focusing on patients with a melanoma. He fought his life and he also spent his whole life saving others. Lives that were taken too soon under such horrific circumstances. We lost so many Australians this summer due to the fires, and so many were fighting fires. They were running to danger to protect us. Like the blackened landscape, our hearts in Mayo are scarred. There is a deep sadness in our community. 
Slowly though, we are beginning the process of healing. Through such enormous devastation, I have witnessed the best of humanity in our community, and I would like to pay tribute to just a few people and organisations that have done and are continuing to do so much. CFS volunteers did everything they could to save life and property, as did farm firefighting units who, who have intimate knowledge of the landscape. They assisted greatly. I saw CFS trucks from the southeast, from Eyre Peninsula, from the Flurio. They came from everywhere. They came from the electorate of Boothby. They gave up their family time at Christmas to assist. And I acknowledge Mark Jones, the Chief Officer of the CFS, and the good work of SAPOL. The Army Reserves arrived in the hills and on Kangaroo Island. They spent their time clearing roads and burying dead stock. On Kangaroo Island, they were also delivering out fodder in inaccessible locations by helicopter. The Oak Bank Racing Club held farm fodder in conjunction with Livestock SA. Savon, the South Australian um, Vets Rescue, continued to assist injured animals, and Sam Mitchell and his team on Kangaroo Island are saving koalas and other wildlife. Wildlife organisations outside the fire ground are also doing so much, um, including Mayo's own Minton Farm in Cherry Gardens. In the aftermath of the fire in the Adelaide Hills, um, Loberthal Defence veteran Adam Wynett mobilised a group of locals to create a makeshift recovery centre in the Valley of Praise Retirement Village. The work of this group was extraordinary. Within days, they had devised a system that matched up needs of people with tradespeople, organised donated fodder where it needed to go, water, clothes, food. It was astonishing to see. And for much of that time, uh, Loberthal, in the northern part of the Adelaide uh, Hills, was essentially ring-barked. Ring you couldn't uh, get in or out. I would like to mention other community responses, including the Nairn Fire Support Group, who evolved out of need and provided an enormous amount of support and resources to families who were impacted by the fire. The goods were sorted at Gary and Rachel Barlow's business, Stroud Homes, in Mount Barker. The Muslim community came from Adelaide. They arrived with vans um, to transport the goods out to Nairn. I'd also like to mention Father Thomas from the Mount Barker Anglican Church. All the children in Mount Torrens received Christmas presents because of the good work of that church. The congregation's contribution to the relief effort was amazing and it went for weeks. And Father Thomas is now volunteering his time putting up fences for Blaze Aid. The state government mobilised relief centres at Mount Barker, Highbury and Kingscote, and I thank the staff at those relief centres for the support they provided for evacuees in the immediate period after the fires. And I must mention the volunteers included the chaplains, the Rapid Relief Team and Red Cross. On one of my trips to Kangaroo Island, I was approached by a Sea Link staffer, asked if I could drop off a bag of homemade treats to the CFS station, any CFS station, anyone in need, they said. The goodies were made by mums at the Victor Harbour Art of Seven Primary School. Um, Mum and Victor Harbour local, Olivia Knott, also organised food and over $1,000 worth of Drake's supermarket vouchers on KI, um, which I collected from Drake's and dropped off to the King's Coat Relief Centre. They were enormously needed. Blaze Aid set up camps at Loberthal and at the Pandana Football Club. Operation Rubicon, the veterans group that assists disasters, is there on the ground right now. Similarly, the Pandana community, within a matter of days, were organising their own emergency centre with food, clothes, nappies, water, born out of necessity, while fires continued around them. I thank every person who assisted in their generosity for their donations, the meals they made and delivered out to homes, the working bees, the running of water, the giving of time. Our whole community came together. Wallace Cinemas at Mount Barker kept their doors open on the 20th for anyone who was evacuated. And I heard that every creature great and small in Cinema 4 was in there and there were no tragedies within the cinema, although a little bit of mess to pick up. And Mount Barker Shopping Centre also stayed open. Adelaide Hills pastured eggs, dropped off box after box of eggs to feed the CFS their breakfast. And I'd like to acknowledge my state parliamentary colleagues who are within the seat of Mayo, Dan Cregan, John Gardner, Josh Teague and Leon Bignall. And a particular shout out to Dan Cregan, who was with me riding shotgun in my car or I in his every day 
one of us on the phone, one of us at the wheel. We have all worked together to support our community, as it should be. The diligence and leadership of Alex Zimmerman, the state government appointed disaster recovery coordinator based at Lobethal, and Mike Williams, the appointed recovery coordinator for Kangaroo Island, must be mentioned, our local mayors, and in particular Mount Barker Mayor Anne Ferguson. Anne originally hails from Kangaroo Island. And while supporting her own community because the area um, of Harrogate and Brakunga lie in Mount Barker Council and have been badly devastated, she also took the time to drive over on, onto the ferry and then onto Kangaroo Island and in her car was loaded with a range of goods, including boxes of her own homemade Anzac biscuits. It is these acts of kindness and love that will get us through. We realise we cannot do this alone. We are a region that grows some of the best food in the world. We are a region of beauty that relies heavily on tourism. We will only rebuild with the continued support of the Australian and international community. And I am so pleased to support the South Australian Government campaign, book them out. But we need a long-term and sustainable tourism campaign. And I would urge everyone to book a holiday in South Australia particularly on Kangaroo Island or the Adelaide Hills, we still have so much for you to enjoy and buy our produce. We desperately need this. We are an electorate entirely encompassed of small businesses. Wines, cheese, milk, honey, apples, pears, confectionery, and if all else fails, gin from our distilleries in the Kangaroo Island and the Adelaide Hills will be very, very pleased um, to take your business. It has been an extraordinary effort by so many. I am so proud of our community of Mayo. We have gone through such sadness, such devastation and such loss. And We all know the fire season is not over yet, but as I drive through our community, I am heartened to see green shoots, glimmers of hope and a sign of renewal for all of us. Thank you.